What is up, everybody? Happy Good Friday, or should I say Hoppy Good Friday? Uh, welcome to another episode of Just Saying with Justin Martindale. We are going to stuff your baskets full of pop culture news and gossip the best way we know how. Producer John, how are you, bud? We're uh, we're doing okay over here. We are do- over here, yeah? yeah. Did, did you enjoy the 50th anniversary of the Comedy Store? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was good to see everybody out of their... Uh... They're just stressed out, anxiety-filled night at the club. Yeah, some people dressed up. Yeah. Some people did not. It was very hot. I, I regret that. It was that. so hot. I regretted that suit real quick. My God, we were in a heat wave, and yeah, everyone was just sweating. I was looking at everybody going, I don't know how you're in jackets and dresses. I just did like a casual Hawaiian guest shirt. I looked good. But yeah, it was a hot one. It was great. I didn't see any, like, celebrities there, though. <laughs> I mean, it depends what you consider celebrities. That's true. <laughs> yeah. I think I saw, like, a puppet at one point. There was a puppet. Uh, also known as Esther Pavitsky. <laughs> but, yeah, overall, it was a great 50th anniversary. Um, uh, Tempe, thank you for turning out on Saturday. That was really, really fun. It was nice to meet and greet all of you. Um After the shows with Heather McDonald, uh, thank you for giving me some great feedback about this podcast. Um, That was a really, really, really fun time. But we've got to start this show off with some bad news. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to friend here at the Comedy Store, comedy legend Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, Passed away from uh, from a hidden illness, I think. Uh, But another one gone too soon i mean i remember him as iago from aladdin that was kind of my favorite uh gilbert moment but uh r.i.p or as the laugh factory will say make god laugh Oof. yeah he, he was really good to me when i was doing stand-up in my 20s he was like the first one who gave me actual use useful advice yeah and like that was a bummer to read this morning I know. Everybody's dropping like flies, man. We were talking before the podcast even started. We were saying, like, I feel so bad for these young door guys who have to go change the marquee every week because somebody else kicked it. But, you know, thoughts and prayers out to his family and friends. Uh, Another one gone too soon, wrecking the comedy community. Uh, But uh, good news. It is Easter. It's a good Friday. So we're going to keep it going with some good news. And I'm going to start with this good news. Cozy Earth. I'm not letting it go. You have the rest of April to use my discount. 40Justin. CozyEarth.com to get yourself some nice, silky, cozy pajamas and bedding. Mother's Day is right around the corner. So don't be afraid to use that discount. 40Justin. And thanks to everyone who's DM me saying, oh, my God, thank you so much. Because 40% off is a big deal. And I'm not just like throwing that out into the wind you're gonna get a good discount and you're gonna thank me later happy easter don't say i didn't do anything for you (laughs) but let's get into it since easter is right around the corner what do you wait by the way do you celebrate easter john i do not you don't i no i don't celebrate because you worship the dark lord yeah okay i'm one of the chosen ones okay but not a big easter fan no i i I don't understand Easter, I guess. <laughs> I, honestly, it was always, as a kid, I was always jealous because I was a Passover kid. So, like, everybody was excited for Easter and we were eating cardboard. Oh, uh, you're a Passover kid. I was, yeah. Now now I don't follow it as much. But, uh, yeah, I, I used to, we used to be eating matzah for five, for eight days. Yeah. And you guys got to enjoy Easter Sunday and be done with it. And still had a week off where you got to enjoy your vacation in school. Yeah. We had a week off where we were eating cardboard. I mean, I get that. I don't really, I don't really remember Easter, which is really weird because I grew up in Texas, so it was like Easter was like a big deal. I remember getting baptized because I thought it was cool, and then, like, I remember like my family would hide Easter eggs around the yard, and I remember one year, I reached into like you know where you turn your sprinklers on in your front yard, and I was like, ah, I knew there was an egg down there, and I reached down and grabbed what I thought was an egg, but it was a scorpion with thousands of babies on its back. And it stung the hell out of my hand. 
And that's when I gave up on Easter. <laughs> that'll like, do it. That, this isn't for it. me. It's not for me. And I just, I don't know, something about the Easter Bunny just freaks me out that we've like normalized this weird pagan rodent that just like comes into your house and... Well, for I think for for Jews, like the one thing that I I could say is like Passover. Ha- you would read the stories in the like at the Passover dinner thing. Uh-huh. I never quite understood the elements of Easter: the bunny, the eggs, the yeah. chocolate. Like I just I, I there was never a story. It's like contagion. fertility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But bunnies don't lay eggs. Yeah, but it, then there's Jesus. But then we put blood all over our doors, which that's my jam. I think I that's like I'm like oh we gotta like put blood on our doors I'll be like oh okay that's that's where I roll but we do that also though for Passover that's what you did that's what I'm saying yeah that was like yeah you you put the blood over the doors so the angel of death doesn't kill your firstborn ah uh, those were the days and this is why I don't believe in religion that's basically the exact same story of Passover I just you know I just feel like a plague of locusts. You know, if we look at, like, all the the plagues of Egypt or whatever during Easter, like, this is the news every day now, where it's like, oh, a plague of murder hornets happens, or, you know, oh, Shooting in the subway. in the woods, or, you know, yeah. Britney Spears is pregnant, you know, I think, but we'll get into that, we'll get into that, but let's keep it uh, Easter friendly for now. Do you remember Cadbury eggs? I do. Do you remember the commercial that has been on the air for like 20 plus years of all the animals looking into the audition tape? You have like the lion and the llama and the cat. And it's like, well, guess what? They're under investigation because they've someone, I guess, in the UK has uncovered a horrible truth behind the Cadbury eggs. All right. Now, getting into it. Britain's best beloved brand Cadbury eggs is under investigation because during this investigation, Cadbury Eggs, which makes their chocolate, I guess, where they get their cocoa in Ghana, West Africa, this reporter met children as young as 10 years old performing backbreaking work on cocoa or cacao farms in the blazing heat for up to nine hours a day. Small children wielding three-foot machetes. I'm sorry. I love a child with a machete. Agreed. I think every child should have a machete at some point. You know, I mean, I feel like Hasbro or Tonga or something should like come out with a uh, My First Machete. If we have an easy bake oven, have a My First Machete. I mean, the world's dangerous out there. Give a child a machete. These kids were hacking through tough weeds with no protective clothing or crack pods with long sharp knives and many sustained serious injuries from the hazardous work and this reporter found desperate farmers were paid less than two pounds a day for the cacao they sold to the u.s company that owns cadbury the farmers were paid so little they couldn't even afford to hire adults to work on the farm so they have to use their own children this is sad Who knew? Yeah, but when you look at what Jesus sacrificed, I mean, come on. But also, is this just one of those inception moments where they're like, hey, look, they're on an Easter egg hunt. Hey, kids, go find the cocoa. (laughs) Here's here's your Easter machete. Go. And while you do it, go. Now, people are outraged. Do we boycott Cadbury eggs? No, because they're what? delicious but yes this is sad i think i think any child labor is terrifying and sad but i mean if the kardashians do it do we care not really but cadbury also sells about 200 million dollar cadbury eggs per year with easter being their biggest strongest day for sales um The website for Cadbury says, we believe the work of children is education and play. No amount of child labor in the cacao supply chain should be acceptable. But uh, let's see. It's eliminated or it's estimated that 1.56 million children are involved in cacao production. Am I saying it wrong? Is it cow cow? (laughs) Cocoa, right? The cocoa. It's cocoa or cacao. 
I think that's what I just do when I lose a friend. I'm just like in a crowd and I just go cacao like a like a bird. I think it's the plant that I'm hearing a lot of ticking. We'll, we'll cut this say cacao production in Ghana. Uh, with 95% of them involved in hazardous child labor, according to the latest report from the National Opinion Research Center. Well, uh, this investigation also went on to say they saw child labor everywhere. We didn't have to go looking for children, working on farms. We visited four farms in 12 days during the harvest and found evidence of child labor on every one. So this investigation found that despite pledges from chocolate companies, including Cadbury, the proportion of children between the ages of 5 and 17 involved in cocoa labor has actually risen in Ghana from 44% to 55% since 2009. From what we saw, child labor was everywhere, says Anthony, the reporter. We didn't have to go looking for children working on farms. We visited four farms in 12 days during the harvest and found evidence of child labor on every one. So, um, I don't know. I feel really bad about this, but, you know, I feel like everyone's trash. You got to have your Cadbury eggs, right? Everyone is trash. But, I mean, have you had a Cadbury egg before? Yeah, they're trash. Uh, I'm not a fan. They're kind of gross. I don't think they're great. I don't believe... Okay, here's the thing. I like the Cadbury eggs that are just pure chocolate. I don't like the Cadbury eggs where you open them and then there's like a fake egg inside. No. If there's, if you're eating... Here's the thing. If you're eating Cadbury eggs with eggs inside with a yolk, like you deserve everything coming to you. Also, Peeps. If you're eating Peeps... I, I don't I you're in my prayers. You're on my prayer list. I don't I think peeps are the most disgusting thing. And I went into a Target the other day and they were getting everything ready for Easter. And they have peeps now that are like in various flavors. Such flavors include cake mix and hot tamales. No thanks. But boo on Cadbury. And we're going to keep it going with hot tamales because Hunky Jesus is back. What? Rock me, rock me, rock me, Sexy Jesus. Sexy Jesus is back. And if you don't know what Sexy Jesus is, I mean, that is a heavy cross you are bearing. Hunky Jesus is a contest that happens annually in San Francisco. Now, <clears throat> is it gay? Yes, but it's San Francisco. So hear me out. COVID-19 ruined everything, obviously, but more importantly, it ruined the Hunky Jesus contest, which is a really cool <laughs> party. There's tons of pictures up every year, and no one throws a resurrection party like the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence um, in San Francisco every Easter after a two-year hiatus, the year's theme of Hunky Jesus is back to our old habits. Get it? Now, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are a group of men who dress up and do community outreach um, with uh, benefits and rallies and AIDS research, HIV awareness. Um, they dress up like nuns and paint their faces white. Maybe you've seen them. We have a we have a uh, a chapter here in West Hollywood, but I think San Francisco is where they originated. But don't quote me on that. So they said to expect all of your holiday traditions, including performances by the sisters and the popular Hunky Jesus costume contest in San Francisco's Dolores Park. Now the day kicks off with an Easter egg hunt. Get to work, kids, in Ghana! <laughs> Story time and other activities for the kiddies from 10 to noon. Then the party begins when celebrity guests um, have, their, have their parties and live performances. So they have a lineup of everybody. And then I guess what happens is they have Sexy Mary and Hunky Jesus. So all these people go up and they get judged on how sexy and hunky they are. Sorry, can you go back? Uh, what celebrity guests are we talking about? I am so glad you asked. Celebrity guests include. Oh wait, oh wait. These are these are the uh, the performers. 
Wait, oh, the lineup of performers makes up for the time loss. Okay, so features such artists as Connie Champagne, Kitten on the Keys, Carly Ozard, Kippy Marks, Nikki Jizz, and the stars of... What, what was that one? What was huh? that last one? Nikki Jizz. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, Nikki Jizz has such hits as Not On My Face <laughs> and Run To The Bathroom After Sex. Yeah, we also have the Oakland's Rebel Kings, uh, Katya Smirnoff Sky, which is a mixture of vodkas, and Kat Robichaux, to name a few. So I'm very excited because, uh, let's see, they say, go get creative, go hard with your costume for a chance to compete. Uh, those fighting, there should be people fighting, for one of the illustrious titles should wear their costumes to the park and line up backstage for their contest when their contest is announced. So here's just some examples. I mean, you get these like, yeah, tutus, thongs, lots of long hair. Um, yeah, look, here's here's a little um, display. Go up, sorry, right there. So the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are a 21st century order of nuns devoted to community service, outreach, respect for diversity, spiritual enlightenment, and promoting human rights. The sisters use humor to expose bigotry and complacency while raising millions of dollars for those in need. See, I was pretty good on that. Now, I would love to be a judge for Hunky Jesus because I think you can kind of go a long way um, with your costume and how hunky you want to be. Like if Jason Momoa went up there, I'd be like, winner, right off the bat. And there's different ways... Um, you can go about dressing up as hunky Jesus. I think, I think hunky Jesus, I mean, honestly, you can't spell resurrection without erection. So I think Jesus, we've all seen Jesus. I think Jesus is hot. I mean, we all have seen, he always has a six pack. He's got a good jawline. He hangs around like hot girls that wash his feet, 12 dudes. I feel like if Jesus were still alive today, he'd be on Instagram for sure. And he'd have the most followers. Get it? I already think he's like the biggest influencer in history. Who, Jesus? Yeah. I think Jesus, yeah, he'd bring his own filters. Like he wouldn't need any of these like sad basic filters. He'd be like, I'm Jesus. Like the miracle, he'd have the miracle of filters. I think he would definitely, there'd be no Photoshop. You'd see a lot of like the Jesus challenge where people put nails through their hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think he would do like a, like he would do like TikTok challenges? Yeah, and stuff? I see. The water it. to wine challenge? Yeah, he seems like a guy who would probably, you think he's great now, but he probably liked the attention. <laughs> You're saying Jesus would be a thought? Yeah. He'd be an insta thought? Yeah. A himbo, as they call him? Mm hmm. It's just a hot guy where he's doing like a gray sweatpant challenge or something? I mean, why not? Jesus is the reason for the season. So get slutty in Dolores Park this Easter. And if you are going, if you did go to Dolores Park for Easter, please let me know. But going from hunky Jesus to an actual miracle, I read this story and was just blown away because A, it's one of the most terrifying things we were even saying that this is white people shit and we're white people. So a skydiver miraculously survives after plunging uh, from a plane at 125 miles an hour and lived to tell about it after a parachute mishap. Now this scares the shit out of me. Jumping out of a plane and the parachute not working definitely is one. I think getting lost in the ocean, you know, a la uh, Deep Water, that movie, is another one. And maybe just like lost anywhere, like the woods. My biggest fear is irrational. It's uh, sharks with legs. Is what? Sharks with legs, like uh, evolving to the point where they have legs and can run. Sharks? With legs, yeah. Sharks with legs. Did you ever see Street Sharks? You know that's going to be a while, right? Uh, I can bring up some news stories that say Don't, otherwise. You know what? We have a full show. Let's save it. 
But yes, put it on deck. But now I need to know. But this woman, a Virginia woman, miraculously survived um, falling out of a pair, falling out of a plane, and her parachute didn't open. Ugh. She got tangled up in her parachute, and uh, it got tangled around her leg, and she slammed into the ground at 125 miles an hour. She suffered a broken back, leg, and ankle in the 13,500 foot 20 second plunge over Virginia in November. And here's this. This is what she says. Everything happened really quickly. She's from Virginia, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, it was a down plane jump where both the main and reserve chute deploy, shift outward and fly outward the ground at an accelerated rate. After 10 seconds of free fall, Hatmaker, I mean, that's her last name, of course, moved away from her instructor and pulled the cord, which released the so-called pilot chute, a small auxiliary parachute used to deploy the main one. But it became wrapped in her leg as she continued to plummet toward the ground at 125 miles an hour while scrambling to free herself. One word. Nope. No. So she hits the ground, bounces. Yeah. Oh my God. No, I no, I would never. She goes, I didn't have any thoughts because I was spiraling. No, I didn't know what was going on. I was just in, in uh, strategy mode. Sure you were. There's no strategy. You're falling. Look at her. She's just falling. That's what I mean. See, if this was me, I would be like this. Also, shit would be coming out from the bottom of my legging. And I would be screaming. There's no way she didn't shit herself. 1,000% shit herself. Yeah. 1,000. There's, 1, no, there's no way she didn't shit or piss herself. Yeah. She went from skydiving to sky shitting. Yeah. So she says, I hit with my left leg first, and then I bounced off of my butt and face planted, and that's how I broke my back. So she hits the ground, like, full on, like, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. God. Then she couldn't move anything and thought she was paralyzed and she was yelling that she's paralyzed i've never heard sounds like those come out of my body i screamed but blood curdling screams the thrill seeker first went skydiving and then fell in love with the sport this is her in her bed this is what this is what you decided this is what you wanted to do i want to jump out of a plane now i've heard thoughts and like um People say that when you're falling and you know you're going to, like, die, that your body just, like, shuts down. Like, you'll have a heart attack or something. But apparently this woman did not. I couldn't even imagine what was going through her head. I would be thinking about, like, all the things I need to do. Like, you know, I miss, you know, tell my kids I love them. I, you know, I, I got to go get more LaCroix. Um later you know i'm this is it i'm not done yet but i'm sorry but if your back is broken this is, but i think this is what pisses me off more about these stories is that when they're like when they say that they're thrill seekers this bitch is gonna heal in like two weeks and be like you know what i'm going back yeah I, i'm more annoyed that she calls it a sport to me a sport it's needs not to a have, sport you're jumping out of yeah, a plane she, so she's calling falling a sport and she lost Exactly. You know who won? The pavement. Yep. This isn't a sport. No. At all. You you literally fell out of an airplane and nothing worked and you screamed and hunky Jesus said this way, child. That's and, her victory lap right there. That right there? Yeah, being pushed on a stretcher. God. I think, I mean, I feel like if you worked that um that free fall company or whatever and you just hear this woman being like ow <laughs> you'd be like what are you kidding me like did she fall in bushes or anything i don't think so she just she just landed let's see oh i bet she's already jumped out of a plane since then i bet she has i bet she's like fully recovered She's not paralyzed and she's going to do it again. This is what happens. Like there's always like some Australian teenage girl who's like surfboarding in the ocean and then a shark with legs <laughs> bites her leg off and they're like, oh, she lost all this blood in her leg. But two weeks after the attack, she's back on her board. What could go wrong? 
It's an Easter miracle. Yeah, look at all those stitches on your back. Good God. You could not, you could not get me to do this. There's nothing I, no. Skydiving is not it. I don't need to go jump out of a plane and look at downtown Burbank. I don't need to jump out of a plane and look at crops. Yeah, everybody needs that adrenaline rush. You know my adrenaline rush? Trying what? to get to McDonald's breakfast before 1030. That's a rush. Leaving at 1015 and hoping there's no line at the drive-thru. Yeah. Yeah. That's adrenaline for me. Um, What's another one? Um, Another uh, a good adrenaline rush for me is like Black Friday. Um, uh, What's another one? Like if you go to like an Olive Garden and get the endless breadsticks. <laughs> yeah. Th things that are like worst case scenario, you don't go home with something you wanted to buy. Not, hey, I might be in a coma or dead. No shit. Like everything, like I don't need an adrenaline rush. You know what an, a good adrenaline rush is right now? Life. Yep. Like that's, do you remember the story about the kid at the carnival who like flew out of his seat? Yeah. God, no thanks. No thanks. What about that festival, Astroland? Like the what? The Astroland Festival. I know. Coachella's coming up in a couple weeks. What could go wrong? COVID. Oh, my COVID. COVID, yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'm glad she's okay. Her husband, is this her husband? He, I bet, or is this the instructor? He's like, oh, God damn it, I need to get her a weaker parachute next time. I like his shirt, though. Oh, wait. She began walking around three months after the horrific accident. It, okay, here's her. This is like, this is the moment at the end of the article where they give you like her update and she's like hot and airbrushed and she can walk again. She's like, it doesn't feel, here, go back up. She says, it doesn't feel real. It feels like so surreal that that even happened, but I'm thankful that the accident happened. Of course you are. I feel like there's a lot of growth that came out of it and I really think there's an opportunity and tragedy, she continued. Yeah. What's this? You look, you look like a cyborg. She looks like a Spider-Man villain now. She is a Spider-Man yeah. villain now. That's what happens. She's like, that's how that's how you become a Marvel villain. Yeah. Like, you survived a horrifying parachute accident, and then like you know you hit the ground, and something wakes up in your brain, and you're like walking around, and then you wake up out of your coma, and you're half machine. That's what happens. And your arch nemesis is the Chipotle chip maker. Your arch nemesis is a parachute. Okay, look, here's the last line. She hopes that she can resume her skydiving after performing a few practice jumps in a wind tunnel. Bitch, stick to the wind tunnel. How about we stay on the floor for a few stick years? Stick to the wind tunnel. Go to Universal, get in that little vacuum, and just spin around in a circle for a minute. Uh-uh. Go, go for Anyways. a hike. Get into hiking. Maybe hiking. Keep your uh, feet on the ground. God, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm going to go skydiving with my crutches. Get out of here. Anyways. Whew. We went from Marvel heroes or Marvel villains actually now to Marvel. Hold on, got sorry, my phone. Sorry, hold on. We could start that one over from scratch. Okay, ready? Sorry about that. So we're going from a skydiving Marvel villain to a bride marvel hero this is a woman who i want to be best friends with this bride wonders if she is wrong for charging parents who brought their rowdy kids to her child free wedding you know what the answer is you're not wrong so in this article we all know there's shitty kids in this world a lot of them are everywhere i see shitty kids pretty much everywhere i go um, I am not a kid person. I appreciate you and wanting to continue your family line or your legacy. Ugh, gross. But I don't want to do it. Not in today's world. The world's too scary. I don't want to have to take care of kids while I'm doing it. Also, I want to like sleep late on Sundays and have breakfast by myself. So these kids are terrible. We all know people with terrible kids. Um, this couple decided that they wanted a child-free wedding. However, when some couples decided to go against that rule, 
The kids caused a scene and the marrying couple charged them for it and the parents got angry. This bride took to Reddit, the only place she knew where she could rely on strangers to give her unbiased advice in the infamous subreddit. Um, I don't even know what that is. a hole or a I T A for sure. Okay, whatever. A I T A is home to, to. Am I the a hole? Am I the a hole is where people go to ask if they're the asshole. Oh, see, I'm not a big Reddit person. Me neither. It's it's sewage. It's human. Am sewage. I the a hole? A I T A is home to the only most intelligent, morally just redditors on the platform who will provide you with high quality advice and an honest rating that decides whether or not you are an a hole. So the ratings, the ratings typically consist of not the a-hole or you are the a-hole. Okay, I got it now. So this bride and groom are planning and preparing for the wedding, but the venue they want is far too small and expensive to fit the number of kids on either side. Why? Because parents have turned into puppy mills. One child is not enough anymore. We got to have fucking five or six or seven or eight. So I guess this is the... Uh, uh, article that the woman had posted so she says hey this is my wedding don't bring your shitty kids and the shitty parents who raised shitty kids said you know what no we know this is your special day but we're too cheap to get a babysitter and we're going to bring our shitty kids to ruin your special day so this happened a few months ago but it was recently brought up again her, this woman's husband and her made it clear to the guests that our wedding was child free. She has a cousin with eight kids and a lot of our family friends have two to three kids. This venue is small, no kids. Please, my God, I'm a bride. This is my day. This is all I ask. She says the kids were generally good. So the main issue was cost. Our venue charges were age two and up, the same as adults, which is $250 per person, including tax and tip. Um, so they decided that they were going to compromise, um, one, extend the dinner the night before to include kids. And the restaurant was very nice about having close to a hundred kids. I couldn't even imagine. Could you imagine a hundred kids with machetes too? Oh, maybe I take that, that topic back. Like maybe kids shouldn't have machetes or hire five babysitters for 25 to 30 kids on the wedding night for locals who couldn't find a babysitter last minute and for guests who traveled with their kids. Her in-laws op uh, offered their home that was less than 30 minutes away to host all the kids. However, on the wedding day, three couples showed up with their children, a total of nine kids. She wrote, my husband was more upset than I was because these folks were on his side. Ooh. After a small scene, they agreed the kids could stay so long as they didn't cause trouble and the parents would pay per child the price that the venue requested. However, the night never turns out the way you want it to, and these kids caused havoc. When the ceremony started, one kid started wailing and another skipped down the aisle in front of me. Oh! <laughs> The bride says she played it cool and the staff was on top of it. They escorted the mom and the two kids outside. The rest of the ceremony went smoothly. But that's not all. There's still the reception that the bride and groom need to get through. And it only got worse. Children ruin everything. During the reception, the same two kids. Put them down. Put them down. This is what I think you should. I think you know how you have EpiPens for like allergies. I think you need to have blow darts for children emergencies. Where if like a kid's acting up on a plane or something, just right in the neck, put it down. So these kids were screaming and throwing food. Other guests and staff were trying to get them to sit. At one point, one kid went under my dress, which was so fucking weird. I didn't notice and I almost tripped. My bridesmaids pointed out that they, that the food they threw got on her dress. And that's when I had enough. I gave my husband the look and he rounded up the kids brought them to the parents and asked them to leave for good. So after the pandemonium ended and all returned to normal, the bride and groom sent a letter reminding them that they agreed to pay for the children. Yes. So now she's asking, is she an asshole for making these parents pay? So they burned the bridge of their friendship. They got a nasty call from the parents. They clapped back with, they should be lucky. I didn't send the dry cleaning bill for the dress and refused to let them visit, which brought them back to the issue again. Are they assholes? I say no. I think the assholes are the shitty parents. 
John, what do you think? Uh, I mean, I think uh, they're assholes. What would Hunky Jesus do? Hunky Jesus would forgive and forget, and that's why Hunky Jesus is an asshole. I would have, I would have taken care of the kids. Just put the, put them, put them out, put them out back, and you, you put them down. Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, how hard is it? It is not hard to get a babysitter. I guess. No. What do you do to get a babysitter? You just go on Craigslist and just say like, well, "Hey, I have to imagine these parents ran out of babysitters that want to deal with their shit kid." Because the babysitters have all fled. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we we don't have a babysitter willing to take care of these animals. But I also think that that like that's a big thing for me. It's like the behavior of the child is with the parents. If your kids if your kids are assholes, look at the parents. First of all, you're breaking a rule. No kids. And these parents were like, <laughs> we're going to bring our shitty kids anyways. No. I think the parents need to be put down too. Less is more. God. So anyways. So I think this woman is a hero. But I also think this next story uh, is also a hero. Because this woman... In where else, Florida, could go so many ways. When the story starts with a woman in Florida, you could either think alligator or meth. But woman in Florida, who knew? It's an Easter miracle. A woman in Florida is my hero today. But she's also in police custody. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> After authorities claimed she put a four-year-old who was in her care into a dryer and turned it on. Now, this is what I think. <laughs> this is what I think should have happened to the kids at the wedding. This woman should have babysat these kids. Been like, hey, guys, let's go to the laundromat. Play a game. Put them in the dryer, turn it on. So this 35-year-old woman in Florida was arrested. Uh, she is charged with first degree felony of aggravated child abuse after a boy was taken to the emergency room in February with grape sized bruising. Who measures bruising? And it's grape size? In grapes. Who measures them in grapes? <laughs> grape sized bruising around his eyes, ears, cheeks, shoulder, stomach, and lower back. Okay, well, did he fall out of a plane? Didn't think so. Suck it up, Junior. Um. This boy was often left in the care of this woman. He was taken to the ER where he informed medical officials that Miss Amber, it's always a Miss Amber, Miss Amber, Miss Amber, placed him in the dryer with towels and spun him around. The boy claimed in an interview with deputies a few days later that he went round and round in the dryer for a few moments. Uh, Chapman then allegedly opened the door, closed it again, and the boy said he went round and round again. <laughs> Uh, I mean, maybe, <laughs> I mean, maybe this is just some poor woman's parking lot carnival. Remember those like carnival, uh, Walmart parking lot carnivals. They just couldn't, they just couldn't get enough tickets. And so she's like, Hey, we're going to save some money. You're going to fluff them towels. You're going to be my little fabric softener. Yes, you are. Who's my little fabric softener? I and Miss Amber. Now get in there and fluff them towels, boy. Round and round again. I mean, maybe he, yeah. I. <laughs> also, what's there? I need, I need eyewitnesses. Were there other people in this laundromat? I mean, would I have said anything? Probably not. Maybe, no, I would. I would have been like, what? What? But, uh, there was some bruising. Uh, law enforcement did not disclose a potential motive for the abuse. Here's, I mean, I don't know if this was abuse or not. Was this a misbehaved child or was this just some poor woman who was just like, come on, get up. You know, I played hide and seek with babysitters. I remember like falling downstairs as a kid and having bruising and uh, putting my fingers in sockets and whatnot, being a ba like being babysat. You know what? I'm glad the kid's okay, but still, I hats off to this woman for putting a kid in the dryer. Not all heroes wear capes, guys. But I will tell you who, do, who does wear a cape. DC star Ezra Miller. Now, this story happened 
couple weeks ago, we didn't get around to it. And I was like, we still have to save it because I want to talk about it because I feel like it's I feel like everybody has been um, in this position. Uh, Ezra Miller, who plays the Flash in D.C., he was arrested. They were sorry. They were arrested in Hawaii uh, following an incident at a karaoke bar um, where they allegedly swore at patrons, disrupted a woman's karaoke set and lunch at a man playing darts. Sounds like a Friday night at a karaoke bar to me. You know, I don't understand what the problem is. But then I read more into this story. Ezra Miller became agitated while patrons at the bar began singing karaoke at the karaoke bar. Um, Ezra, who is in the Fantastic Beats franchise, began yelling obscenities. At one point, grabbed the microphone from a 23-year-old woman mid-song and lunged at a 32-year-old man playing a game of darts. Okay. Ezra has had 10 uh, police reports called on them while they've been in Hawaii. They're still in Hawaii, by the way. But I was like, okay, so what's the deal? Why does this matter? And then I read into the story more. The people were singing Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Lunge, queen. Lunge. I think anyone singing that should go to jail. I'm I'm with Ezra. I'm I'm better I'm better than Ezra, <laughs> which is also a great band. <laughs> mm. I think there should be certain karaoke songs that have been um that should be banned forever. And I was thinking about it. Shallow is definitely one of them. The minute I hear that, tell me something, bro, I'm like, God damn it. Sorry, happy Easter. Um, another one. These are my most annoying karaoke songs ever. Freebird. Too long. Way too long. Go to a Texas karaoke bar. Some guy is going to sing a nine-minute version of Freebird. Another one on my list. Four on Blondes, What's Going On? No thank you. Yeah, that's pretty much how we end Goddamn Comedy Jam. Every I know, time. and I can't say anything. The crowd loves it. We did Queen also. They loved it. Oh. And I said, hey, no. Oh, my God. That's pretty awful. Oh, God. Another one is Bohemian Rhapsody. Yep. They brought that out for uh, Comedy Jam this time also. Crowd loved it. I like it, but it's just very... If there's a group, if it entails a group of more than two people in a karaoke song, then that's where I'm like, I draw the line. They do it, you know, people do it with Spice Girls as well. Yeah. Which I'm like, okay. Um, the most embarrassing thing is like Bohemian Rhapsody is very hard to like stay on beat. So you try to dance with it in a group, dan dance to it in a group and you just can't, you can't do it. It's very difficult. It's difficult, but it's also one of those songs where it's like, A, if you don't know the song, get off the stage. Yeah, I feel like that's every karaoke song. If you don't know the song, don't sing it. Yeah. It's not hard because then you just look like a turd up there and uh, and and you don't know the words. Or you, Here's the thing. I went to a place here on Sunset Boulevard not too long ago called Naughty Pig, and they have a karaoke night, and I, I wandered into it. And um, this guy and this girl were singing another very popular karaoke song called uh, uh, Time of My Life by Dirty Dancing. You know, didn't know the words. Did not know the words to one of the most iconic songs of like any 80s movie. But then I'm like, then why the fuck did you put it in the hat? And there's four words to that song. Seriously. And the girl... The girl, oh my God, you guys, the girl who was singing the song, I was outraged. You should have seen me in the back just fuming. I was just like, uh, she was like, she was like, I've had the time of my life and I'm owing on to you, huh? I'm like, you don't even know how the song goes. It makes me so upset because there's so many songs and then you have people waiting like myself waiting and I'm like, just give me. 
When's it my turn? And you have people who just go up and go up and go up and go up and you're just like, no, and they just suck all night. There's nothing worse. So I get it, Ezra. If, 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 if I, I mean, granted, physical assault shouldn't be the, <laughs> the issue. But I mean, if you're getting pushed, if you're in Hawaii on vacation trying to enjoy a pina colada and some like 23-year-old tourist gets up there and starts singing, tell me something, boy. Absolutely not. I'm going to throw a pineapple at your face. But here's the true Easter miracle. This is the story that broke the internet. And here's, this is, I needed this because I'm honestly just so bored. I'm so bored with the news lately. Like, I'm so, like, every story is just like, Kim Kardashian farts in a Hobby Lobby. I'm like, God, like every, like, God, I'm so over it. I need a break from Kardashians. I need a break from Pete. I need a break from Jennifer and Ben. Congratulations on your engagement. She's officially Thanos. She's collected six Infinity Stone and engagement rings. They're, her and Ben are getting married. It is 2004 again because now Britney Spears is pregnant with child. I don't know what was worse, though. Um, the amount of oops, she did it again jokes or hit her baby one more time jokes. But she announced on Instagram this week that she's pregnant with her third child. And it was a little confusing. <laughs> I mean, in true Britney Spears fashion, our favorite Kentwood, Louisiana possum left us all guessing um, as to what exactly she meant because she posted this on Monday. Hey, y'all, I got a pregnancy test and, uh, well, I'm having a baby. And everyone was like, what? Because at first she was like, I just thought it was a food baby. I went out to a sizzler. And went to the buffet a couple times, and I thought it was just a food baby. But then my husband, he said, no, baby, that's a real baby. And then he put me in the dryer and said, let's go round and round another time. <laughs> so, yes, she left this message saying she's pregnant again. Um, This will be her third kid, her first kid with her husband, boyfriend, Sam, as Asgar, Asgari. I think is his name. Here, I'm gonna scroll up a little. Yeah, Sam Isgari. I knew it. Uh, so yeah, she's referring to him as her husband now. They met in 2016. Previously announced their engagement in September of last year. So I feel like we all were confused. We we're like, is it a food? Like only Britney Spears can have the whole world guessing. Is it gas or a real baby? Was she spinning around on her Instagram and just got bloated? Or is it a real baby? So her husband took to Instagram and he posted an image of like these two lions holding a bear cub. A bear cub? No, two lions holding a lion cub. Am I having a food stroke or an actual stroke? Um, And he... Put all the rumors to rest. He says, marriage and kids are a natural part of a strong relationship filled with love and respect. Okay. Fatherhood is something I've always looked forward to and I don't take lightly. It is the most important job I will ever do. Well, because it's like the only job he has right now, right? Well, he's like an actor. He's acting in stuff. He's doing things. Can but you name that stuff or one of that stuff? What's that? Can you name one of that stuff? He was in that show. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. It nailed it. He was in that show that people talked about at the water cooler the next day. Oh, sorry. No. From home. Because they work from home. So he, uh, she's obviously not going to go out as much. <clears throat> okay. Because she doesn't want the paparazzi to follow her. Um, She says that she suffered from perinatal depression, saying it was horrible. Um, thank Jesus. She thanked Jesus. Thank Jesus. We don't have to keep that pain a reserve proper secret. According to the National Institute of Mental Health. Okay, here we go. Some real logistics. Perinatal depression is depression that occurs during or after pregnancy. Yeah, no shit. Um, she's excited. Everyone's been excited for her. Kevin Federline said, I'm very excited that she's pregnant. He's released a statement. But guess who showed up in the comments? Jamie Lynn Spears. Cue thunder and lightning. Cue thunder and lightning. Cue thunder and lightning. 
Jamie Lynn, who has not said anything. No one's no one. None of the parents have said anything on her Instagram. Jamie Lynn's like, you got it, girl. I'm still your number one fan. Doop -doop. Um, yeah. So Jamie Lynn uh, liked her sister sister's post, though, doesn't appear to have commented on the news. So she just liked it. What a bitch. Seriously. Just. Oh, I'm just, she's one of those, she's one of those bitches who's just like, oh, I'm just going to give you a heart. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to give you a heart so you know. Ugh. So Jamie Lynn liked the post. God. Jamie Lynn just thirsting, thirsting for attention. But the parents didn't even say anything. Then some paparazzi were following Justin Timberlake not too long ago. And they said, hey, Britney's pregnant. And Justin was just like, get out of here. Leave me alone. So congrats. We're going to see what happens. Um, we're all happy for Brittany. Uh, but at the same time, I'm going to wait a couple months to actually think she's pregnant because I feel like, I don't know. However, we will not be hitting the dance floor one more time because finally another Easter Day miracle has happened. Dancing with the Stars has officially been canceled. Thank you <laughs> so much. But Dancing with the Stars has hit its lowest ratings after fans slammed host Tyra Banks for her bizarre outfits and stumbling over words on the show. Um, people have been outraged that Tyra Banks has uh, filled in. There have been so many fumbles. I am not a watcher of Dancing with the Stars. I have made jokes about it, calling it Dancing with the Who's because it's just become like tiktokers and randoms and radio hosts and whatever but um hold on i think i oh i actually just got invited to join the cast of dancing with the stars but luckily i will not be doing that so uh they did do a britney night on dancing with the stars and tyra showed up as the iconic britney spears uh with her pigtails and all that stuff so it was just a mess I've never watched it. I feel like it's just kind of ran its course. Tyra has been being dragged lately on social media with her uh, with her behavior from past seasons of America's Got Ta Got uh, America's Got Talent. She hosted that too. Um, America's Next Top Model, where uh, she made women dress up like different races she made women apparently like have eating disorders and hurt themselves physically for you know a uh, kit kat bar and some change so dancing with the stars has officially been canceled now one of those people one of those contestants in this last season oh by the way it has been picked up by disney plus so if you want to watch that garbage on disney plus go for it but one of the contestants this story fascinated me uh, Jojo Siwa, who I believe came in second place on last season of Dancing with the Stars, the last season, says she didn't get an invitation to the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, and she's not sure why. Now, Jojo Siwa, who is made from pixie sticks and a suicide of all the sodas combined, she has all the energy in the world. Uh, you, you, I think we all kind of fell in love with her on Dance Moms, and then she's kind of become this, like, TikTok star. She recently came out as a lesbian not too long ago. She was actually the first contestant on Dancing with the Stars to dance with a female partner. But she recently created some controversy, um, at concerts and stuff, saying, like, you know, mentioning, like, hey, it's okay to be gay, and I'm, you know, I have a girlfriend and all that kind of stuff. So she's embracing her new life as a gay woman. Um, but recently she cut her hair. Uh, Nickelodeon produced a show for her, her documentary slash movie concert. Um, can we actually go down to the a little bit of the article here? Yeah. So Nickelodeon sponsored her, her tour and everything. Um, and used her song at the actual awards ceremony and says, you know, I wasn't invited. She was actually nominated for, um, I guess it was like social media star of the year award at the Nickelodeon's kids choice awards, but lost to TikTok, TikTok star sensation. I'm about to vomit in my mouth saying that Dixie D'Amelio. Sure. 
Um, is that, is that a real name? Dixie D'Amelio? Yeah, is that a real person? Yeah. Or it could be Charlie D'Amelio. I don't know. I thought you just made that up on the spot. I am so out of the loop. See, she's also hosting Hunky Jesus. She That's <laughs> the celebrity. The D'Amelio sisters. It was either Charlie or Dixie. Either way, who cares? Um, but people are asking about it because JoJo took to her social media and said, a lot of you guys are asking. Now, I have a theory about this. When people start their videos with a lot of people are asking, that usually means no one's asking. You know? Like Britney Spears, when she does it, she's like, a lot of you guys are asking me. No one's asking. So that always gives me a little bit of a red flag. Like, hey, everyone's asking why I'm not at the Kids' Choice Awards, and I'll tell you guys, I wasn't invited. Now, a lot of people have said, oh, it's because she's gay. A lot of people are saying she's changed her hair. You know, a lot of people are saying, which means no one's saying, um, she's just confused and everyone's kind of confused. She said, let me know what y'all think. I think I might be into the up and back when she got her new haircut. Um, it looks, I like her new haircut. I think it's cute. You know, it's getting hotter. Oh, she lost to Dixie D'Amelio. Okay, great. But however, I will say, I don't think it's because she's gay. I think Nickelodeon definitely has an image of like kids and Jojo is an 18 year old. And also John, you said, Hey, you weren't invited because you didn't win. That would have been humiliating for her and her brand to be sitting there. It's not like the Oscars where they're adults. These are kids. Right. So I think they're extra concerned. Even MTV does this. They don't invite a big name to sit there and not win an MTV Movie Award because it's a garbage award. Well, that's what... Yes, exactly. Also, she's 35. She's been a kid for... She's like 35 years old. This girl... <laughs> she's she, not... This girl was 14 for like 15 years. She was 14 when I was in junior high. She's a lost boy. She was a, a 38 year she old. She lives in ponytail. Neverland. Yeah. yeah. No, but I think I think you're absolutely right. Like as someone who's gone to the American Music Awards, uh, I've gone to the MTV Video Music Award or no, what did I go to the Vi MTV Movie Awards? Not everybody's there because they are like, hey, is this worth me going and getting this? No. Why? Because you didn't win. So I feel like she's like I wasn't. I think she's kind of baiting. Nickelodeon, because Nickelodeon did play one of her songs during the commercial breaks. But I honestly think it's like, hey, you didn't win. We had a full house. We're still going through COVID. We can't like bring everybody. And if JoJo, if you did show up, we're going to charge you extra because we don't have enough room at the table for you. That's what I'm thinking. I hope that's the case. I could be completely wrong. Nickelodeon could just be like... <laughs> You know, who knows? They're like, nope, no young lesbians at our table. I don't think that's the case. I honestly think it's like a, you know, you didn't win. Sorry, but we only have room for enough people. But who knows? So, yes, Britney Spears is pregnant with child joe josie was not invited to the nickelodeon's kids choice awards here's another people here's another couple that have been denied uh jennifer lopez and ben affleck are engaged they bought or ben finally proposed to her after two weeks of <laughs> dating <laughs> jennifer lopez's engagement ring collection is complete um i'm honestly so bored with this i think it was fun I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. it. Is it wrong to think he's only doing this because he wants to fuck over a New York Yankee? He's a Boston guy. Oh, yeah. I think it goes that deep. You think it goes that petty? I didn't yeah. even think about that, John. Yeah, he just really wants to fuck over Alex Rodriguez. I mean, who doesn't? Fair. It's definitely at the top of my list of things to do this week. Um, But also, I mean, my God, I... There was video of it where she was like crying and I'm like, here's, I have never been proposed to. I have never proposed to anyone. I could not imagine being proposed to six times and each time being like, this is the happiest day of my life. I can't believe it. 
This is the this is one of the most beautiful things that's ever happened to me. Just a girl from the Bronx on the six. I couldn't believe this day would happen one way or the other. But six times, says that's so many. Like, was that a good <laughs> Jennifer Lopez? That was a per- perfect. Hey, don't Jennifer be fooled Lopez. by the rocks that I got, cause I got six. I'm still J Lo. Jenny from the block. I'm still collection. Jennifer yeah. Lopez. Yeah. I played Selena. And I'm engaged now six times to Ben Affleck, who's got a big Phoenix tattoo on his back. She's got a rare green diamond, which they have estimated to be up to, I think they've estimated it up to $10 million is this ring. So that's 25, 20% of the house they want to buy. They want to buy a $50 million house that they've been denied. And they're devastated. Because I guess... This deal fell through. This $55 million Bel Air estate won't be home sweet home. We're going to have to find another $55 million home elsewhere. Uh, this is why I can't get it. This is why I don't. This is why I don't get upset with these sorts of things. Because I just I just remember that like, hey, celebrities, they're they're trash just like us. We're coming out of a pandemic. And people are pissed off that their $55 million Bel Air home fell through. You know what? Go to the British countryside. Get it, get a get a get a Downton Abbey kind of castle. Get out of here. All right. Well, we gotta wrap this up. Um we have some more stories for you, but we are going to save them for another time. These are gonna be great. Um also you'll hear me on Juicy Scoop probably talking about some of them this Thursday. Um, or yesterday, you'll hear me talking about him yesterday, but, um, yes, we want to hear from you. What stories do you want to hear us talk about? Um, I've got some upcoming dates. You'll see me at the Brea improv on the 27th of April. Um, I'm also probably going to be going to a Renaissance festival soon. Also, I'll be going to the Bridgerton experience. So you're going to hear about that in the upcoming weeks. Um, but yes, thank you all for the likes and the listens. I love you all. Uh, thank you, John. Um, and as always like, and subscribe, leave us a comment. I love hearing from you guys. DM me some stories you want me to cover. And, uh, yeah, you guys have a fantastic Easter weekend. Um, hopefully this episode didn't offend everyone and I won't be told to kill myself because that would be the worst thing to have to read on Easter. So take care guys. Love you all. We'll see you next time on just saying with Justin Martin.